Oh, I see here he's a contributor with The Athletic now. The Doug Gottlieb Show, weekdays after mine, Fox Sports Radio. Contributor, holy moly. Okay, here we go, Duggar. I, I started my show saying, um, I, I don't think any of this stuff. Uh, let's roll. Let's scroll down the things LeBron's part of right now. And and our staff put this together today. These are just like things now LeBron that, that are part of LeBron's resume. I don't think they're time consuming and time sapping. This is not a Ken Burns documentary, a 10 part on the Civil War. <laughs> but I do think this is something is that basketball culture has changed in the last 20 years from 16 years of age on you, the man. You start looking at how big LeBron is now and, you know, man, LeBron's your boss. He's not a teammate. Jimmy Butler looks like a pedestrian basketball player, not what he is, which is one of the top 20 basketball players in the world. Is it possible? It's not the time and the energy that LeBron's projects take, Doug. Somebody else does most of the work. I got a big staff. You got a big staff, right? But it is. I don't have a big staff. <laughs> just, just, just for the record. <laughs> but it is shrinking everybody else in basketball. And Paul George is like, eh. He made Kevin Love into his valet. Kevin Love was a 25-13 guy. Well, there's, there's a bunch of stuff coming together uh, because uh, this is weird. I guess it's Tuesday because Monday was LeBron Love Fest, right? Yeah. Yesterday for you with the, the Jazz and, and how there's no chance the Jazz will ever beat right. the Lakers in the playoffs. Today, today it's like, wait, you're, you're cautiously, I can't tell if you're optimistic or pessimistic about LeBron. I think LeBron, the kids are out in the yard playing and yeah. he's inside flexing in the mirror. Turn the headlights down. Dim them a little. Be part of a community and your teammates. Well, it's it's a great point. Look, LeBron has always been a look-at-me guy. And, and I understand that, that Michael Jordan somehow catches the wrath because he once said Republicans buy shoes too. But yeah. it's like we don't even point out the fact, I, I think it was last year, he gave $7 million to start two health clinics in Charlotte. Like yeah. he's been phil- philanthropic. Dropic, yeah. Philanthropic, you know, yeah. Long before LeBron ever was. You know, he gave a million dollars um, to help a fund – in, in terms of, you know, for the when they had the riots in Charlotte yeah. for police officers. The difference is that he has never been willing to be front and center right. at the face of controversy. He's written checks and supported people politically in a different way. Um, but, but I think what you're getting at is something that Chris Bosh pointed out a long time ago. When LeBron left Miami and uh, Chris Bosh was left behind, remember, kind of like Kevin Love, he got a new deal. He said this, you know, you, you still have to go through things. You still have to figure things out on your own. It's extremely difficult, extremely frustrating. Um, he's going to have to deal with that. He was talking about Kevin Love yeah. at the time. Yeah. He nailed it. Being the third wheel is the worst wheel to be on the LeBron James card of success because Chris Bosh caught all the heat. When they didn't, when they played poorly against the San Antonio Spurs, Bosh, Bosh stinks. <laughs> right? Oh, his supporting cast is awful. When when the when the Cavs played poorly, it was Kevin Love. How trade do we him. Hide? How do we hide Kevin Love? Right? Trade him. That's we talked about trading him around the trade deadline. And so I I do think that Kyrie Irving exposed something that Chris Bosch talked about that I'm sure Kevin Love feels, which is uh, well, no one's disputing the fact he's one of the all time great basketball players, but it's not easy. And while I agree with you, th- there's not. Look, some basketball players in their off time go looking for chicks. Some play video games in Fortnite. You know, the young guys in the Lakers, Josh yeah. Hart, they play Fortnite. LeBron James likes to delve into movies and the TV shows, and he actually likes to show up at his kids' events, which I think are a great thing. Yeah. You got plenty of – there's only so much time in the day that you can that you can dictate to basketball. That, that's the truth of it. You know, Michael Jordan used to play – 18, 36 holes of golf, then go play hands of poker all night, still have energy for basketball. These guys, tr- have a, these guys have a well of energy that most average human, most civilians could only dream of having. But it's a lot. And as you pointed out the entire year talking about him, he's a mogul, right? He wants to be a mogul. There's a lot that comes with it. He's used to things being. So the questions are, can he get along with others? You know, can he fit into a system? He's never fit into a system. He's been the system. True. You know, how will he evolve as a basketball player as he gets into his mid and at some point late 30s? Can he legitimately recruit players? Everyone says, I want to play with LeBron. Right. But do they actually want to play with LeBron? Good point. Um, So, and then how does he deal with all of the different people pulling at him now that he's in Los Angeles? Everyone says you can do it, but like, dude, you've been in Miami? That's cute. Okay, Miami's cute. In comparison to Los Angeles, it is night and day in terms of the amount of people, amount of people pulling at you. And you can surround yourself with your crew, 
but there's still others that that get in the way of it, in addition to the fact that he's playing mostly with younger players, and now their attention is going to be divided because they're part of the real Lakers as opposed to that group that's been playing the last five years, frankly, embarrassing the name of the Lakers. Doug Gottlieb is joining us. That was a lot. So, no, that was Sorry, good. I got to catch my breath. That was a lot. Yeah, you unpacked a lot there. So I said this to start the show. People, you know, the girl wants to date the edgy biker and the rock star, and then the rock star doesn't come home at night because he's a rock star right you know my our former employee barstool sports is edgy they were there an hour okay we're uncomfortable oscars with seth mcfarland we want edgy we're getting too old Ooh, he's mean we don't want seth mcfarland everybody says they love edgy the new york giants are boring they're the greatest boring franchise ever their stars are boring correct phil sims hostetler bavaro carl banks they have been uncomfortable for multiple years with Odell. Now they're saying, we want to marry him. We're putting a ring on that finger. We're going to make him the highest paid player. And I look at that and I think, his brand is the opposite of your brand. You are marrying somebody you have been uncomfortable dating for four years. It, it, you're, there's a lot of truth. Now, it should be pointed out the most popular giant and arguably the greatest giant ever is Lawrence Taylor. True. He was a lot to deal with off the football field, and that was back in the 1980s. Um, as for Odell Beckham Jr., here's the part that I find fascinating. You go back to right around the NFL draft, and we're talking was April, May, June, July. So we're talking four months ago. Yeah. And there were talks that they were going to part company with him because there was the video of Odell Beckham Jr. In a, room, in a hotel room with a woman with what looked like cocaine. Right. And John Mara comes out and he's like, look, the, enough is enough. Enough is enough. And there was no commitment even from Dave Gettleman that he'd be on the roster, be on the roster this year. So, look, he's been on his best behavior for two months. Anybody can be on their best behavior for two months, especially when they're under contract and it's in a contract year. I'm not, I, I would disagree with you in terms of, uh, in terms of the value. And yeah, he's the party girl that you want to be very cautious in marrying. My only thing is like, live with Odell Beckham Jr. Live with this version of Odell Beckham Jr. Right? This is not the 1950s, 1960s, where you got to pretend like you haven't spent the night at each other's house right. and then you get married so that you can know you're not living in sin. Right. You can live in sin if you're the Giants for a couple months. Let's see how he deals with adversity. Let's see what happens when he has a big drop. Let's see what happens when Josh Norman is in his girl. Hell, let's see what happens when Jalen Ramsey talks trash to him and he has a big drop around the goal line. Or Eli Manning looks like the 37-year-old Eli Manning that many of us think he is, in which he doesn't nearly have the talent that he used to have, and there were always some flaws with Eli Manning. Eli throws five picks in two games, and the Giants lose a couple of games, and all of a sudden the papers are writing about him, and, and all the local radio hosts are on him. Let's see how he deals with it then. If he is then a great leader, if he is then a perfect spokesman, if he is then still a breakthrough wide receiver above the fray, then sure, give him a long-term deal, fine. But you're under, Dave Gettleman, their general manager, said it'll happen in due time, when it, at the appropriate time. The appropriate time is not before he's actually proven it. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.